Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, okay, I'll move to exit executive session at uh, 829 with no action taken. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're back. So possible action, the firefighter's contract, it's your pleasure. I'll move to authorize the first selectman to enter into an agreement between the Town of East Lyme and Local 3377 International Association of Firefighters, AFL-CIO, effective July 1, 2019 through June 30, 2022. Second. Terrific. Any other comments, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Great. Ex officio reports. Uh, Mr. Salardo? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, we were planning last night. Um, it was actually one of the first meetings. They didn't have uh, much on their agenda, so they took time to uh, um, for the POCD subcommittee to uh, uh, talk to the commission about where they're at. Um, so just give you a little update. They're, uh, they're working toward the uh, December 2020 uh, state goal that we will not the state requirement that we have to update our POCD um, they're looking to they're reaching out to a lot of other boards and commissions they're getting uh, some good feedback from everyone um, if anyone here has feedback they'll, they'll love it um, they're looking to do a survey um, in the next uh, month or two um, just to get um, more open-ended feedback so they could kind of find where any issues may be um, They've uh, had uh, help from, um, oh, I think it's Wesleyan, Dr. Osfeld. Her students uh, gave a lot of feedback uh, to, the, to the subcommittee on things to look for, things that are in uh, POCDs around the state. Uh, so and they gave some recommendations, but they also cited them with the things that have worked. Um, and it was some interesting conversation about it, I guess, you know, from, the last POCD update was 2009. There was a lot of recommendations in it, and uh, if you go back and look at them, a lot of them have been accomplished. Um, so they're going to be looking for new, new, new things, um, to uh, goals to put in there for the next 10 years, for the time to go. Um, so that's all I have. Terrific, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Hardy. Yep, two short ones. Uh, the Commission on Natural Resources has finished their water study. And um, they'd like to be scheduled for um, a short presentation to the board in the, within the next couple of meetings. And they also have finished the application for uh, grant money from Sustainability Connecticut. Uh, and they would like to uh, also make a presentation to the board on that. I wonder if we might schedule that for the next meeting, our second meeting this month, on su just the sustainability. Sustainability. Uh, yes. And what is the other? Uh, the other one is the water report that they've been working on for the past couple of years. Okay. I would suggest we do so two separate nights for okay. those. Okay. But I think the sustainability one uh, would be the good w a good one to start with. Okay. And if we don't have a full agenda, maybe we could schedule that for the next meeting. Terrific. Uh, secondly, zoning meets tomorrow night. The only uh, major issue on there is a re. Um, a, shall we say a recall? It's the second time around for a uh, request for a cell tower for shortwave radio um, on uh, off from Ancient Highway. Right. So the first application uh, was not approved, and so now they're back for a second try with modifications. Okay. Mr. Sir? Okay, from Parks and Rec, uh, coming up on the 13th of this month. Uh, week from Friday is Jeffrey's Rainbow Run at McCook's. It's a 5K in memory of uh, Jeffrey Borges, who was um, tragically uh, killed in Salem back in 2012. And they, proceeds from that have, uh, every year they give two or three scholarships uh, to students who are gonna either get into uh, some type of uh, animal uh, profession or uh, teaching profession. So uh, that's through uh, Youth services. Also, uh, following up the uh, summer concert series at the beach and the bandshell have concluded. They were fantastic this year. I went to very m several of them, and every type of band you could want to see is there. A lot of fun. Unfortunately, we had to cancel a lot of them because of uh, weather. weather and so forth. But from now and every Friday night from now until the last uh, Saturday, uh, Friday of the September is movie nights uh, by the bandshell. About 7:45, a movie starts. So if you want to bring your family up there and watch it, it it's, it's fun to do. Uh, 
talk to Dave Putting, you wanted me to remind everyone that uh, now that Labor Day is uh, passed, dogs are allowed in the parks and on the beaches at uh, Cheney, uh, Hole in the Wall, and McCook's, but they are not allowed on the boardwalk. You wanted me to make sure of that. That's it. Dogs are back in fashion. Um, <laughs> very good. Mr. Cunningham. Uh, you know, I, I don't have anything. Uh, yeah. My meeting last night was canceled, so Great. nothing okay. new. Summer schedule, you know, but I here so. you, you, I'll tell you what you can tell around this building. Um, it's after Labor Day. Things are, <coughs> things are buzzing around here. We're very, very busy. Uh, I have a few items. The JAG Partners, the JAG Development um, is, is that is that 55 unit affordable housing development that um, um, is being built, uh, originally denied, but one on appeal in the southwest corner of our town just past um, Divine Wine. They've been in, they've, they have their plans, um, they're planning on starting the process very, very shortly. Um, with that process, we have negotiated with them to um, um, uh, fulfill our need as a town for water, um, as they bring water into their project through another source that we want to tap into that so they uh, we need them to adequately size the pipes in other words so we can bring water to our new public safety building that was promised to the public when we were putting the plans together that we would do that so we'll be bringing public water into the building it has water and no the well is not i've heard it's wells tainted and all no no the honeywell was there for uh, years and, and before that another organization and um the water's there and it's been flowing and um, they drank it, but we, um, we want to bring town water in. Uh, as well as the emergency access, it was posed at one of the public hearings that what happens if we get a 500-year flood, and much to Mr. Cunningham's um, suggestion, hey, you know, with weather and, and emergencies going on in this world, a 500-year fi flood might be uh, uh, maybe around the corner. You never know with uh, rising tides and uh, global warming and such. So um, with there will be an emergency access available to um, vehicles at the police department to access through Capitol Drive and um, that was part of the original application that they would have to um, do that and they will and that again satisfies uh, the promises made by the uh, police commission when we were talking about the new public safety building. Um, the Nyanta Community Church just celebrated 300 years do I have that right? Is it 300? Yes. It is 300. Um, they had an amazing service at McCook's Park. I was happy to be part of it and, and issue a, a, a town proclamation. 300 years ago, the, the settlers here, the residents here, on Sundays, you know, back in the colonial days, they made a big deal about spending the whole day at church and, and all that. They, they would have to go over to oh, somewhere near downtown Old Lyme, where downtown Old Lyme is now, to attend service. And that would have taken hours and hours um, to get to. And so eventually there were enough people here that they said, can we build another community, another society to the east of Lyme? So thus that we think the name East Lyme comes from the east of Lyme. Um, and uh, 300 years ago, um, a Reverend Griswold um, was um, selected to be uh, the, the reverend and a church was formed i believe near the old stone burial grounds up by oh, society yeah. and riverview and they 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 had several houses of worship there uh, before they moved it down the street a little bit but 300 years ago it was kind of a, amazing impressive. to think about and they had um, a, a church service um and a celebration of their new pastor and welcome officially the new pastor to their um, community. So Nyanta Community Church, congratulations. Um, 300 years young. <laughs> the heating and air conditioning in this building is, um, is, is, um, is not doing well. Uh, the control units on the wall uh, are way past their useful life and there are no controls available, no parts available to fix some of these controls. The units on the roof, the condensers, um, we're getting price quotes now for a total outfit of not only the computerized part, but also the units themselves. There'll be two different projects, but I want you to know that's coming. Um, to you and we've struggled with humidity in this building um, and controls 
As you read in the paper, we had some issues with the uh, con construction projects down by Costco. As the um, Costco project is being built out and um, the roadway needed to be uh, worked on and it is being worked on um, through a DOT permit, we saw nothing but delays and congestion and that's to be expected with any construction project, especially with state roads and arterial roads and highways, but it was a little um, out of control and didn't have a lot of order to it. Um, my suggestion along with Mr. Bergaud to the state DOT is to call a meeting Then there and, and they heard our request and called the meeting, and let me, let's be clear on that, it was our idea to do that. Um, and um, we had a meeting and we developed a set of parameters um, by the town's request and the DOT's insistence that the uh, de developers work within these parameters. Uh, namely, that only one lane out of the four under the bridge would be closed at any one time, that when when Frontier is working on their utility part of the project, that the Cherry Hill part, the asphalt part, the curbing part will stop work. They'll go do something else. But we can't have two construction projects on 161 going on at the same time. And um, a lot of the work will be shifted to night work um, as well. So there's also uh, hours of operation that we settled on. We were concerned about with school buses um, being stuck in that traffic, and it was a little out of hand at, a little point. at one point. I'm happy to report after that meeting, we saw a remarkable difference. Yes, there'll be delays. Yes, congestion comes with construction. That's normal. Um, and, and, but what we think is we've organized the chaos down there a little bit and I'm, I'm happy uh, and, and pleased with DOT and uh, with uh, the, our police and, and all those involved. Mark, what's the completion date you think for all those projects? Uh, well, Costco wants to cut a ribbon. I met with Costco today. Um, they're planning on cutting a ribbon on November 14th. That's the tentative date. That's not the locked in date. And that's, a, that's not for publication yet necessarily because things can delay and the state DOT still has some issues with the um, contractor and the uh, traffic light plan and all that. But that's the goal. So uh, we'll see th this project tie up in the next two months. Um, much sooner than that because they got to be done and then they got to... Yeah, so all the road work... Yeah. Road work will be completed. done soon. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, there'll be some permanent closures to the on-ramp going north for a 24-hour period of time. Um, people will be diverted over to exit 75 to get on the highway to go north. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, highway to go south, the off and on-ramp will be closed uh, because we're going to tie in the new off and on-ramps. And I think that's over a period of several days and that will be well publicized once they're firmed up with that date. We've asked the DOT to make sure they coordinate the closing of the bridge down by Heritage and Lover's Lane with the closures of these lane of these on and off ramps. That can't occur at the same time. <coughs> We're going to have people trying to get from one place to another and find two detours uh, at the same time that doesn't work um so we're they're they're coordinating that and we're we're um we have weekly meetings with the developer and the dot now to uh, ensure that we have a smooth transition through all this i have met with dominion over the last week to, uh, regarding the sale of the building on main street to the town to make that official to start working through the legal side of things we don't expect the police to be out of their building for at least another nine months or so, uh, but we're starting the development, uh, the process now of buying that building and um, then applying for the Brownfield grants when that money w is available from the state and um, creating um, a process in which to turn that into an economic benefit for the town uh, and prior privatize that, that building. Um, uh, w the Public Works and Engineering Department. I want to clue you in on a new project that's coming up, um, starting to develop. The end of Oswegatchie Hills Road meets Veterans Park driveway, as you know, at that triangle, and it's a bit of a traffic mm -hmm. mess. So I asked the fellows downstairs, and we're coming up with a plan to tie those roads together so there's one curb cut. So two cars aren't trying to exit that area at the same time. What's very difficult about that is that it's, it also reaches 150, 
well, 161 or Flanders Road at a point where the road curves. If you're coming from downtown, the road curves and there's the telephone poles kind of line up to almost look like a stockade fence that you can't see oncoming cars because the telephone poles around that curve kind of block, block you out of oncoming traffic. So we're going to also push the entrance down a bit. Um, uh, it's, it'll, it'll be dramatically um, increase the safety um, in that area and we'll have plans coming forward and we hope to, that that would be a springtime project next year. We also have a number of sidewalk projects we're hoping to, to get in before uh, the end of this building season, including the McCook's Park, um, the, the, the parking lot that goes, is that Columbus Ave that goes from like the um, VFW yes. or even really from the church all the way down to McCook's that, that, that cement uh, um, sidewalk is in need of um, buttoning up if you will um the sidewalk that goes up giant's neck hill that that steep hill when you're going up the giant's hill heights is it's torn up horribly and it's also not safe so we want to build up the curb there and rebuild that sidewalk and there's a sidewalk across the street from the high school that we've done a gr we've done a great job putting in that new crosswalk that signalized and i've watched the kids use it and um it's awesome and I'd like to bring those same lights downtown uh, at some point but once the kids cross the side uh, cross the street there's no sidewalk or this patch as a sidewalk to get to like McDonald's and right. CVS and we got to continue that sidewalk we have a couple of um, uh, kids with some mobility issues and um, they have much difficulty as they have to either roll their wheelchair in the in the street or be pushed over ruts and dirt so uh, we really want to get that fixed before the um, season ends so and there's a couple other um, sidewalks as well we're working on that's all I have I believe as you know and I think I've reported the um, as I, I'm also the chair of water and sewer we are um, in full planning mode and actually develop the uh, de delivering mode of um, uh, replacing all the water meters in town with radio frequency water meters so that we'll be able to detect um, leaks um, sooner rather than later and eventually be able to bill quarterly which will I think will help our consumers have smaller four smaller bills rather than two larger bills a year and I think that will help with finding uh, family finances. That's all I have. Is there any um, any questions? Yeah, I'll just number yes, five, the communications, the vacancies on the cable TV advisory. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do we have any suggested names, or do we are those vacancies filled? Or are we still looking for people? We appointed someone at the last meeting. <coughs> I apologize that this is on here. I think it probably just wasn't deleted off of um, Sandy's. Um, Okay. Uh, boilerplate, if you will. So All right, I'll check the minute. Yes, we um it was Mr. Fox, I believe. Who volunteered. Yeah, uh, so someone volunteer. who had just yeah, somebody who had just new to the area and indicated an interest to, to oh, yeah. T V C C A has asked once again for a town to come up with a representative. Mm -hmm. And we have nobody. Uh I was talking to a fellow who's recently moved into Black Point. Um that he's looking to get involved. I'll check to him. He's even talked about helping out with Meals on Wheels, so this might be something he might be interested in. Great. We do need it. We desperately need it. Um, and Deb Moynihan from the TVCCA reached out to me personally saying, it's been long enough. We need to find somebody. So please, let's, mm -hmm. let's find somebody. Public comment? Anyone? Anyone? Last time, anyone <laughs> like to speak? Okay, Selectman's response. I don't think there's much if there's no comments. Move to adjourn. Sorry. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>